Good evening here in New York. I'm Josh Walker, President and CEO of Japan Society. I couldn't be more thrilled to welcome you all uh, tonight and ohayou gozaimasu and morning to those of you joining from Japan and everywhere in between, including Hawaii, that we have a special guest that we'll get a chance to hear from uh, very shortly. But we're excited that you're here for the first of our Living Traditions uh, workshop. We're going to be talking about Bingata textiles, preserving a royal tradition in Okinawa. Uh, I'm really excited uh, to be able to co-present this Living Tradition webinar series with the Japan Institute of the Portland Japanese Garden. They've been great uh, partners. It's a great East Coast, West Coast combination all the way from New York uh, to Portland. We also get additional support uh, for this webinar from the government of Japan and the Japan Society program season sponsors, Booth Ferris Foundation and Shiseido Americas. We additionally get support from Anonymous Donor and the Sandy Heck Lecture Fund. That was a mouthful. Thank you for hanging in there. Now I get to introduce the topic for tonight. Uh, this is the first program of our multi-part Living Tradition webinar series, so you know it's going to be good. Uh, the Living Tradition series unravels the historical journeys of some of the most iconic facets of Japanese culture through conversations between thought-provoking experts and cultural stewards on how they maintain deep-rooted traditions in the present context and day. This program will explore the fascinating history, unique methods, and current state of the Bingata textile dyeing uh, process from Japan. We have an expert moderator for the evening, so you don't have to listen to me any further. We'll be turning things over to Dr. Masato Ishida. He's an associate professor of philosophy and the director of the Center for the Okinawan Studies at the University of Hawaii at Manao. Thank you so much, Ishida Sensei, for joining us. Next, we have uh, our first speaker, uh, uh, who will be joining us from Okinawa. It's uh, Toma Chinen. He's the 10th generation head of the Shimbu Jibu line of the Chinen family of the Bingata craftsmen. He's the president of the Chinan Bingata Institute. And Mr. Chinen's presentation will be interpreted by Mr. Shinji Odo. Thank you so much for joining us. Domo arigatou And then certainly last but not least, we have Virginia or Jeannie uh, Sansen. She's the director of the Madison Art Collection and the Lisby uh, Museum at the James Madison University. She's written extensively on Japanese textiles, including contributions to Textiles Asia and Textiles of Japan, the Thomas Murray Collection. So now let me uh, first uh, welcome Jeannie uh, back up to the stage to begin uh, the conversation. Over you, Jeannie. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, and thank you to the staff of the Japan Society. Um, I'm honored to be here with our moderator and my co-panelist. I'm really excited to learn from them and to talk to you a little bit about the historical grounding of Bingata. So I'm going to take about 10 minutes to do that. Uh, if you know history and textiles and culture, you know that this is not nearly enough time to be exhaustive, but hopefully this will give you an idea of the context in which Bingata arose. Next slide, please. So tonight we're celebrating one of the signature art forms of Okinawa Prefecture. The prefecture stretches across the Ryukyu Islands, a group of subtropical islands south of Kyushu. While today they're part of Japan, they once comprised the Ryukyu Kingdom. Next slide. The Ryukyu Kingdom was not a cultural outpost of Japan, but rather an independent kingdom with its own unique cultural traditions, religious beliefs, and art forms. Power was consolidated in the royal court, located in Shuri Castle, which also served as the administrative center and cultural heart of the kingdom. Next slide. The island sit at a critical entry point between Northeast and Southeast Asia. This positioning allowed the kingdom to become a major maritime trading power that enjoyed a vibrant artistic exchange with numerous foreign countries. Trade with China was particularly important. The kingdom was granted the status of tributary state by the Ming emperors, and it handled the majority of trade entering and exiting China. Next slide. The royal court at Shuri was highly stratified with roughly 11 classes of aristocracy. Influenced by Chinese court traditions, the stratification was reinforced by fabric choices and color of clothing, hachimaki or caps that you see here, and hairpin materials. Next slide. There were numerous fabrics worn within the kingdom, with the royal court varying materials based on the seasons. Thanks to surviving records of sumptuary laws, we know that aristocrats wore bast fiber in the summer, including raimi and bashofu, fabric made from thread banana plants. Silk or cotton were worn in the winter, with imported Chinese silk often used for royal clothing and official uniforms. Next slide. 
ryukyuan garments, or ryuso, are similar to Japanese kimono in that they are open robes held shut by belts and made from a single straight bolt of cloth. Ryuso, however, are wider, shorter, and have a longer collar, typically with a triangular gusset connecting sleeves to the body. Next slide. And here you can see the two garments separately and also being worn side by side. Next slide. So now let's take a look at bingata. Bingata is the process of polychrome stencil dyeing with resist paste that first appeared in the historical record in the 15th century. The bing in bingata originally meant red, but now connotates all colors. As you can see from these two examples, the technique produces incredibly vivid textiles with mirrored or repeating motifs. This was a luxury form of textile decoration due to the time-intensive expert skill needed to produce it. The royal court had authority over all bingata production, with imported raw materials and stencil designs distributed to dyers by the tax revenue office. Three families in Shuri, Takushi, Shiroma, and Chinen became official bingata dyers to the royal court. The dyers were granted the status of lower gentry, reinforcing the exclusivity of the technique. Every aspect of Bingata textiles, including the pattern, size, background color, and motifs, depended on the wearer's status. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at these two examples. At left, you see an upper garment called a Dujin, which was worn by a woman of the royal family. At right is a winter garment that would have been worn by a member of the gentry class. The royal garment has larger motifs created by multiple stencils against a vivid yellow ground. The original audience would have recognized the combination of Chinese style phoenixes and peonies as symbols reserved for use by the royal family. The gentry garment has smaller motifs created by a single stencil in colors other than yellow. Such differences would have visually reinforced the social hierarchy of the court. Next slide. We have no definitive origin of bingata as both the earliest written references and extant examples appear in the 15th century when it was a fully formed art. We know that there are similarities between bingata and several imported dye techniques, also utilizing stencils and resist, that entered the Ryukyu kingdom via trade in the 14th century. All of the techniques you see here would have been accessible to Ryukyuan artisans and may have inspired bingata to some degree. But cultural exchange is never strictly divided between an active transmitter and a passive receiver. Rather, it happens within a plural network, and Bingata likely influenced the artisans of other countries as much as it was influenced by them. Next slide. What I want to impress upon viewers tonight is that Bingata is not a derivative art form. This is not an Okinawan version of Katazome or Batik, but rather something that is unique to the islands. The garment to the left represents these distinctions beautifully. The skillful, intricate stencil work, fine shading, and brilliant combination of colors are all distinct to bingata. The rest of the world certainly found bingata to be distinct as well. Japanese painters of Ryukyuan people, such as the one at right, often depicted them in bingata to underline their national identity. Next slide. The motifs featured on bingata reflect the transnational nature of the Ryukyu kingdom. Court painters provided the designs, which were then delivered to the dyer's workshop to be converted into stencils. These painters may have drawn inspiration from Chinese painting manuals or blue and white porcelain, such as the ones in the upper left. They also drew from the Japanese decorative vocabulary. You can see a clear visual comparison between the bingata at right and the kimono detail in the lower left, though the colors and graphic presence are quite different. Next slide. So let's talk about colors, which is arguably the most important element of bingata. Both plant dyes and mineral pigments are used. You can find some of the plant dyes on the left and some of the mineral pigments that are used on the right. Mineral pigments demonstrated the true reach of Ryukyuan trade. Cochineal, extracted from the scale insect native to South America, found its way to Europe in the 1400s, and from there it traveled on the Silk Road to reach the islands. Lac, another red pigment, originated in India and proliferated in mainland Asia. Cinnabar and orpiment were originally imported from China, though the kingdom acquired the technique to make cinnabar during the early 18th century. After its invention in Berlin in 1706, 
Prussian blue, the first modern synthetic pigment, found its way to the islands and was quickly incorporated into Bingata as well. Next slide. So to understand why such vivid colors were favored, one only has to look at the sur surrounding environs of the artisans. In Okinawa, color is everywhere, from the bright blue ocean to the numerous flowers, and Bingata reflects this natural state. Next slide. Until the annexation of the kingdom and the abolition of the Ryukyuan aristocracy in 1879, Bingata was reserved exclusively for use by the royal family and their court. In the twilight years of the kingdom, however, rules relaxed slightly. For example, wealthier commoners were permitted to wear egata, bingata achieved using various shades of indigo. After 1879, bingata could be worn by anyone. Next slide. Some of the most spectacular extant examples of bingata, such as this one, come from the Naha City Museum of History, which holds a set of national treasures related to the second Shou dynasty. During the annexation, Shou Tai, the last Ryukyu king, was forcibly relocated to Tokyo and made a member of the Japanese peerage. Many family treasures went with the king, including royal bingata garments, such as this lined watansu, or outer garment, with a scarlet ground and patterns of wish-fulfilling jewels, blue dragons, and auspicious motifs. After the dissolution of the kingdom and royal court, Bingata production decreased as the people of the islands grappled with their new Japanese identity and laws that prohibited many cultural practices, including traditional dances. During the near total devastation of the Battle of Okinawa in World War II, many priceless records, stencils, and artifacts were lost. It is thanks to the Bingata craftspeople, such as the family members and my co-presenter, that Bingata survives and thrives today as one of Okinawa's most treasured art forms. The collection of royal treasures was eventually returned to Okinawa, where they remain today. And Bingata continues to be worn regularly by performers of traditional dance, such as the one seen at right. Next slide. So one of the last things I wanted to mention was the role Bingata played during formal processions in Japan. So after the Ryukyu Kingdom was made a vassal state of the Satsuma Domain and later the Empire of Japan, Ryukyu royals and officials were made to partake in formal tribute processions to the court of the shogun. These visits were documented by numerous Japanese painters as the Ryukyu kings were the first foreign monarchs to visit Japan. In this hand scroll by Kano Shunko, you can see Bingata robes represented on several of the figures. Uh, this emphasizes not only the foreignness, but also, also the exoticism of Ryukyuan textiles, which you can see contrast quite sharply with the indigenous Japanese ones. So I would very much like to uh, turn the platform over to my co-presenter, Chinen san so that we can learn more about uh, the work of his family and current practices. じゃあ、え、今日はこのビンガタが今現在において um, hi, this is Shinji. I'm an interpreter for today's. Uh, Mr. Chinen is uh, the fifth the tenth generation of the Chinen family. And I'm uh, the executive director of the Ryukyu Bingata Preservation and Conservation uh, Organization. Uh, we, together with, uh, for past five years, we, we tried uh, multiple uh, projects regarding the traditional uh, Ryukyu Bingata and also kind of new things like such as uh, NFTs. Uh, today, uh, we are grateful to be here uh, to inter uh, introduction, uh, introduce uh, what's the Bingata now in Japan and Okinawa. And he, uh, Mr. Chine, will um, explain about the, the market of the, the Riku Bingata and also his uh, new challenges um, but that had been done for the past few years. スタジオってあるんですけど、これは今だいたいビンガタ職人っていうのは全沖縄で150人ほどいると言われています。The size of the the artisan of the bingata 
is so-called around uh, 150 artisans in, in Okinawa. えっと、次のスライドで。で、この150人の職人の中で、ビンガタっていうのは大体年間2億円のえっとマーケットがあるとされています。で、the uh, market size of Ryukyu Bingata is uh, around 2 million USD. で、この2億円のうちの大体93%、90%以上が日本の着物を作っています。almost uh, 93% of out of that uh the Ryukyu being the artisan creating um Japanese kimono. で、先ほど説明あった流装っていうのはもう年間にだいたい10着作るか作らないかぐらいの規模になっております。Actually the Ryukyu is original uh, Ryukyu costume the, the market size is quite small it's like a uh, 2% and uh, regarding Mr. Chinen's uh, the work for the Riso is just 10, uh, 10 items, so it's very small. So in that way, in the modern era, the Riso, Japanese clothes, in the modern era, the Riso is a single one of the clothes that is made from the Riso, and then it is made from the Riso, and then it is made from the Riso. As uh, Ms. Ginny explained about the history of the being at the product, um, the, actually the, uh, the product is time, uh, changing time to time, uh, corresponding to the historical background. But uh, some of tools of being is uh, remaining, uh, such as tofu, who the, your right-hand side picture is um, Lukuju, um, which is dried tofu. He used uh, um, the mat for cutting the stencil. で、それとなんかね、今回えっと、はい、コロナがあったんだけども、このコロナの影響っていうのは、ビンガタとして作るのではなくて、え、呉服業界として見たときに、えっと、ビンガタの着物っていうのは、このフォーマルではなくて、カ
from Liquid Kingdom era to now. で、え、今のこの知念瓶型研究所、知念瓶型ラボラトリーというのは僕のソフトである知念サダオとソボデル初子が立ち上げました。この2人が、え、親戚の知念の瓶型の職人の先生に習って、それでこのうちの家系、う
次のお願いしますでこれが、えっと、作品として作ったおぼろ型という技法を使った瓶型になります。From here,、uh, he will introduce his recent uh, uh, product. And、uh, this is that,、uh, the kimono of he created last year.、Uh, this used the, the technique of o b o r o g a t a which is the overlap、uh, stencil technique. 次のラインで。OK ですか次の、えーえー、スライドなんですけど。あ、ちょっと1個前でお願いします。これ、拡大したのが多分出てると思うんですけれども、おぼろ型っていう技法があの、型紙を2枚重ねて作る技法で、普段の瓶型よりもさらに倍の技法になってきます。The、uh, technique of おぼろ型、おぼろスタイル。Uh, he used、uh, two、uh, different stencils, and、uh, there's double、uh, processes of the、uh, being at the making. The theme of this kimono is Fukushia. The motif of that. This is a very interesting one. This is a v e r 細かい柄を使っていて、技法は瓶型なんですけど、いかにこの和服として、このきれいにこの作品を見せるかというものにあの考えを置いた作品、あ瓶型になっています。Uh, for all this、uh, kimono, he's very stick on the very detail、uh, design motif. And、uh, this is 瓶型 but、uh, he, he inspired by、uh, Japanese, more Japanese traditional style of 和服。So it's kind of a mixture of the Wakufu, Wafuku and Bingata. これも、えー、おぼろ型の技法を使った帯になっていまして、えー、ふくらすずめっていうのがうちのスタジオのすごくあの有名なモチーフになっているので、それと,、えー、とこのおぼろ型の技法を使った、またこれも新作になっています。This is new、uh, OB, and、uh, this one used also、uh, Oboro Gata technique. Uh, the overlap sensor technique. And the motif is、uh, the sparrow, of which is the signature of、uh, Jinan's studio. ここ He will introduce the recent、uh, challenge of the studio. So, uh, he created the Furoshiki. For wrapping the awamori, which is a very traditional uh, liquor uh, spirit in Okinawa. So, この awamori を特許録してまた NFT を展開したり。And、actually, you can see the open sea, the market of the NFT now on sale. And、uh, he is collaborating with Riku Awamori in distillery and、uh, creating、uh, Riku Bingata for only for the distillery. And he turned it to the NFT and、uh, to introduce not、uh, you know, the kimono people, but also the geek or tech people. The collaboration with Arita Ware. で着物ではなくてアートとしてえっと5メートルの作品を使ってホステルレストランに収めたりもしています。Uh, not only for kimono, but、uh, this is art for the hotel in, in Naha. This is five meter long and three, the, the, the OB ticket style or is overwrapped, or not overwrapped, but、uh, laid out. He really thinking about not only kimono style but also、uh, Riku Bingata、uh, bin for every、uh, many places, such as a hotel or a pottery or other NFT. And、uh, he wants to、uh, introduce and expand the Riku Bingata itself. Thank you very much.
Thank you to both uh, Ms. Sankson and Mr. Chinen for those fascinating presentations. I'm already excited. Uh, we will now move on to a panel discussion and I would like to ask a few questions to both presenters, starting with uh, Chinen san So uh, Mr. Chinen, uh, I have a small question for you that has a personal kind of um, uh, taste. Um, when you started to study this traditional form of art, was it a natural transition for you to go into this because it is your family tradition? Or was there any struggle uh, in deciding whether you would like to, uh, as the 10th generation master, to uh, uh, contribute to this tradition? えっと、ちねさんへの質問ですけれども、今回、今の、ま、銀河田職人として工房を引っ張っているわけですが、どのような経緯で、え、このお、ま、銀河田職人という職人についたのでしょうか。あの、歴史のある工房ということで、ま、
若いうちからこういった文化や作品があるっていうことを目の当たりにしておくと大人になった時にそういえばああいうのがあったなってふと思い出してくれる程度でいいので、うん、やっぱり先ほど言ったようにコラボとかしていく中でそこに瓶型がある。で記憶の中に敏感さがあるっていう状態を確立していきたいなと考えて。Okay, um, thank you. The, re,、uh, re, reason why he is、uh, working on the both of traditional thing and also new things,、uh, he is an autism and he is truly autism, so he really wants to focus in on creating 敏感さ but、uh, currently he, there's no other person who supports about、uh, PR or doing YouTube or doing Instagram. And he's now done by all himself. So,、uh, his uh, uh, future plan is to success those、uh, PL things to studio staff. Then he's focusing on、uh, the creating b i n g a t a That's why he is now、uh, really keen on to very active on to digital and also the traditional things. And for all younger people,、oh, he wants to、uh, create some touch points. For those、uh, young people、uh, who are not the direct、uh, kimono purchaser or customers, but uh, he want, uh, by uh, creating the touch point of、uh, Ryukyu Bingata、uh, by, say,、uh, Tumblr, by、uh, Potoli, and mother,、uh, in, in other、uh, places, then he wants to realize there is a Bingata and su such a、uh, beautiful、uh, motif and culture in Okinawa. Then, After say five, ten years, they grew up, then they noticed that,、uh, that kimono、uh, as a bingata is great. So、uh, it's kind of nurturing the,、uh, the future customer bases. Thank you very much. I would now like to turn to Jinni san.、Um, thank you very much, Jinni san, for your very、um, uh, insightful presentation that introduced us to the whole tradition, its history, its uniqueness, and so on and so forth. But、uh, what was the first contact with Bingata、uh, you know,、uh, like for you? How did you uh, uh, become so fascinated、uh, with this、um, art? Yeah, that's a great question. So,、um, in my first,、um, first long term postgraduate position at the Clark Center for Japanese Art and Culture、um, out in California, which is now part of the MIA in Minneapolis,、um, I had an opportunity to meet a collector of textiles who really favored the unusual and often understudied and upper, underrepresented、uh, textiles. So,、uh, Thomas Murray collects a lot of things, including the textiles of the Ainu and textiles of Okinawa. And, We hit it off and started working on an exhibition to, featuring his work in the Clark Center. And having the opportunity to not only deep dive into the subject, which is so rich and fascinating and、um, should really be known by everyone,、um, and also to handle the textiles and see them in a very intimate setting,、um, to see the beauty of the dye work. and Really get to appreciate them, not behind glass, but up close,、uh, inches away, was really special. It made a huge impression. And I've never lost that love of Okinawan textiles. And it's just made me、uh, more and more voracious over the years to learn more and more. So I was fascinated by t i n a n s a n s presentation. And I have many, many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful.、Um, you mentioned j i n i s a n Uh, let's say two、uh, enormous historical challenges that b i n g a t a face. So, the first one is annexation of the Ryukyus to、uh, mainland, modernizing Japan. The second one was World War II, which destroyed many forms of art. And these include, of course, like、um, uh, court dance, court music, literature, all sorts of things. So, when the art、uh, has been revived and art in its art mentioned his grandparents' efforts, that too. It, it, it was no longer、uh, an art that was、uh, you know, monopolized by, let's say, the royal family or something. Now it is everywhere, it is expanding, it's shared across、uh, the borders. And regarding、uh, that particular aspect of the flourishing、uh, you know,、uh, future oriented art, and as an international expert and curator, 
what hopes would you have for this art, especially on the international level? Yeah, that's a great question with um, perhaps a long, unwieldy answer. Um, I think that Okinawan textiles really show us that we live in a global world, you know, whether it's the 14th century or today, we are so interconnected by the exchanges that we have with other people. And textiles, I think, especially are incredibly intimate in that they represent who we are and our identity. So sharing textiles is often a great way to spark understanding and appreciation for cultures that are not our own. Um, I, that's why I'm interested in them, and that's why I think other people can get really excited about uh, experiencing them. So my hope would certainly be more international exhibitions of, uh, of these textiles, um, greater understanding um, of the techniques and the artistry, and I would certainly like to see more publications in English of this art form so that uh, non-Japanese speakers can really have an opportunity to dive deep, uh, even if there is a language barrier. So yes, that's a, sort of my, my long, unwieldy answer, but hopefully this conversation just sparks curiosity to learn more. You know, I hope that many people go to Chinen Sun's uh, social media and follow and see what he's doing. And I hope that they also uh, explore the other topics that the Japan Society is going to feature um, on Okinawan cultures in the future. Great. Jinny san, uh, I almost see in you a burning question, a uh, set of burning questions arising for Jinny san. So, in the interest of time, I, I would like to know, you know, maybe one of the most burning questions that you may wish to ask Jinny san. Okay, well, I'm very curious about the um, proliferation of Bingata as kimono over Ryuso. So I'm very curious as to whether that is because there is more of an appetite for uh, kimono fashion in Okinawa, or whether there is just a larger market for kimono. So Bingata um, is produced to feed that market. So I'd love to get his thoughts on that. えっと、ま、流層と和装のま、優先点のマーケットの状況というものに関して、ま、少しの深くコメントをもらっていいでしょうか。そうですね。えっと、流層っていうのが今現在沖縄で踊りをする人がほとんど飽きることがほとんどな
mainland Japanese style kimono and use of the 10 orders that you, uh, you paint.先ほどのコメントの中で流層の作品自体は10点程度しか作らないというコメントがありましたけれども和装を作るときと流装を作るときに関するその職人としての違いというものに対してコメントをいただけますでしょうか流装の方が難しいですね形が違うので和装のところは
are these inherited jobs having learned the skills from family or is there an apprenticeship program? え、家族だけについていく工房もあれば、え、本当に文化担当をやりたい興味があるっていう職人さんを雇ってえ、やってる工房もあります。うちはえっと、今はこのまた家族ではない従業員も雇いながら工房を運営しています。Okay, uh, there's two types of uh, the approach. Uh, one is uh, the primary succession and the other one is apprentice program. And uh, Mr. Chinen's studio is now um, open, open up the opportunity for uh, every person who wants to learn Bingata. And, uh, and also, there is some uh, autism uh, support sponsored by Okinawan Prefectural Government. Thank you. Uh, second question. So, this is about the process of making uh, uh, Bingata. Can you explain more about the hand painting process involved? Just one question and all. えっと、そうですね。手書きの工程、手書きの工程。うん、打ち食いとかの、打ち食いとか。あ、そうですね。え、型紙を使う工程と型紙を使わないで染める工程があります。で、型紙を使わないっていうものは筒に糊を入れて
Yeah, great question. Um, well, you can read my book, uh, which is Textiles <laughs> in Japan, uh, the Thomas Murray Collection. Um, but also there's a fabulous catalog um, that the Textile Museum put out, which is uh, Bingata only in Okinawa. It's an amazing publication. Um, it features many of the, the pieces that I highlighted tonight, um, which are just absolutely gorgeous. And it does a lot of unpacking of the processes as well as the, the cultural details that help you better understand this art form. So I would definitely recommend that book. And perhaps I can pass on a couple more to our Japan Society colleagues after this talk um, to post in the comments on YouTube. Thank you. Uh, we'll all read your book first. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I think there's an unavoidable question here, very much related to uh, the previous question. So, if if someone is in the United States, where where can you find where can you find being good at textiles? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I did a little bit of searching before this talk just to see if there were any exhibitions. And unfortunately, there aren't any right now. Um, it really highlights the fact that this is an understudied, underrepresented um, art form that should be featured more widely. So I certainly hope that this talk sparks a little bit more thought towards that. Um, but there are many uh, museums in the United States that do have like singular works of Bingata. Um, I don't know whether it's still on, but there, there were several Bingata works featured at the MIA um, a, a couple months ago, and the presentation was really lovely. So if you look through museums, collections, you can often find examples of Bingata and other textile arts of Okinawa. So I would definitely encourage you to look at the larger museum collections if you happen to be lucky enough to be near the Met or the Brooklyn Museum. I know that they have several lovely pieces. Um, and if you're further south, like I am, then the Textile Museum uh, on the campus of George Washington University is certainly a wonderful resource. And um, if anyone wants to message me and ask where the nearest work of Bingata is that they might be able to see in person, please let me know, and I'd be happy to help. Thank you, so I, I think, given the situation of the, the FX, the depreciation end, Japanese end, is now smashed. So it's a <laughs> great opportunity to visit Japan and Okinawa. And we are quite Absolutely. open to yeah provide some opportunity to... Um, uh, visit uh, artisans and also do some uh, trial of the Bingata. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask uh, uh, one final question to Chinesan and a variant of the same question to Chinesan. So, uh, for Chinesan, are there plans to get youth, young people involved in the tradition of Bingata? Hi. ありますよ。あの、一番若くて18歳ぐらいから工房で働いてもらう子もいますし、今後もやっぱり銀型が残っていくには若い人たちにどんどんどんどん教えていかないと、やっぱり伝統っていうのは廃れてしまうので、そこ
not been collected as um, as vigorously as it should have been in museum collections? How can we look at collections critically and evaluate what has been excluded and how can we work to reverse that? So I certainly hope that by just starting those discussions and having them think about collections and exhibitions as living entities rather than just static things that exist in the past, um, they'll be more likely to understand the impact that they can have upon the display and um, the widespread education on these art forms. Thank you very much. As someone involved in education, I cannot appreciate your comments more. Sunen <laughs> <laughs> san, any final thoughts uh, that you wish to share with uh, the panelists and um, the audience?最後のコメントのオーディエンス向けにお願いします。それそういったものがアメリカにはあるので、あの、なんかもっともっとこう知ってで、それをした上でこの今度は沖縄の歴史とかっていうところにもあの広めていってくださったらすごく嬉しいです。ありがとうございます。Thank you and uh, the story we talked uh, this time is the very fraction of the whole being the story. And so uh, if uh, this opportunity sparks the audience curiosity, uh, that's fantastic. And uh, if you look back uh, the Ryukyu Kingdom era, uh, it's the trading uh, country. So uh, there's uh, the potential, there's many Ryukyu Bingata uh, work in, in, in the, by, you know, many places in the world. So uh, if you look at some uh, being to ish textile, please uh, be more interested in curiosity about uh, is it really being gato or not. And uh, regarding the exhibitions in US, uh, from the Okinawan autism point of view, uh, those work is great one. So he really wants to see directly and also uh, um, uh, visit to see. And so uh, the quality is quite uh, high end of Riku being gata. So uh, please uh, find and look into uh, those opportunity uh, that's uh, provided in US. And uh, he is, uh, he hoped that uh, those uh, touch points creates uh, another uh, curiosity about uh, Okinawan history or other cultural things of Japan. Thank you. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, I wish to thank our great panelists for joining us tonight and for answering all those questions. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for questions tonight. Um, thank you to everyone uh, who has joined us for this virtual program. And we apologize if we didn't have enough time to get uh, to other questions. Um, uh, if you have a moment, I wish to um, ask everyone to fill out a short survey about this program. You can find the link in the chat. And we appreciate your feedback. Uh, we will be announcing new programs in the Living Traditions series soon, so please um, check the Japan Society website for announcements. Uh, we, we hope you can join us then as well. And once again, because this is an online program, I cannot uh, give a big hand to other great speakers and Otto San for being our great interpreter, but uh, my appreciation is genuine, so thank you so very much. <laughs>